Good afternoon, folks. Call the order. Should we all just stand and recite the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, any uh, correspondence at this time? No. Okay, we have one case, old business. <clears throat> it's UV-2024-67. It's renewal. It's applicants, Rex and Janet Beach, location 716 West 1014 South, Hebron, Indiana. Zone is A1, acreage is 11 acres. Request to continue the use variance to allow a temporary mobile home on a property to help care for elderly mother. Hello. You're on. State your name and address, please. Janet Beach, 716 West, 1014 South, Hebron, Indiana. Okay. And? Just, Just to continue the variance to have my mother on the property. Nothing changed, right? I, no. Nope. She'll be 100 in May. 100. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and still living by herself, so. Never it, had any complaints on her. No. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> isn't that great? So, it is great. Uh, I will make a motion to continue with the stip you know, same stipulations that we had in the past. Yes. I think it went back to 2020 or 24? No, 20. 2000. How many 20, years? Yeah. 20. 20, I think. Okay. So, I'd like to make a motion to approve case UB-2024-67 uh, for one year. With the same stipulations. So you're approved. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the next cases are public hearing cases as we read the rules of conduct. So bear with me at a public hearing before the board. The petitioner or proponent shall first present the facts and arguments in the support of the case. <clears throat> Those who oppose the petitioner shall follow. The petitioner shall have rebuttal time at the conclusion of those opposing the petition. Those opposed shall be allowed a total maximum of 10 minutes to rebut any new statements made by the petitioner in this rebuttal. It should be within the discretion of the board to impose any time limitation on either the petitioner or respondent and to limit public comment to those determined by state statute to be interested parties. Rent remonstrance shall be accepted by the board but need not to be read into the board's record. <clears throat> this then concludes the public hearing. We maintain orderly procedure. Each side shall proceed without interruptions by others. All materials presented by the petitioner and or remonstrators or supporters to the petition, including photographs, shall become a property of the board and part of the record. Okay, with that, the first case is DV-2024-68. And applicant is Aaron Anima. Anima? Anima? Okay, location 71 South Timber Drive, Valparaiso. Zone is R1, low density, single family, in residential area. Acreage is 4.7. Request to allow for existing 40 foot by 60 foot pole barn with a 30-foot by 30-foot addition to vary from the following. First, to allow an increase in height from the maximum allow 20 feet to 25 feet, 2 inches. Second, to allow the existing structure to remain in the front yard. Third, to allow a decrease in minimum front yard setback. Fourth, to allow the exterior finish not to match or closely resemble the primary structure. State your name and address, please. Yes, my name is Aaron Anima at 71 South Timber Drive, Valparaiso, Indiana, 46385. Okay. Um, I'm petitioning for the barn permit. Um, I also have green cards. Um, about all four variances, then. Um, I have given my reasons on the uh, application and everything, so I just wanted to read and write up. You need to state everything yeah, it's because state. it's a public hearing and it's okay. recorded, so yeah. tell us why you're here. Okay, uh, okay, I'm here to uh, address all four variances. Uh, the first one is the height requirement. Um, I'm exceeding that by five feet. Um, the main reason why I chose to build such a taller barn 
is so that I can accommodate my car lift. And when I decide to retire, I want to put like a big mobile home in there so that it would be able to fit. So I had to clear the doors and then to meet the snow load capacity and all of that, the regulations with that, it needed to be 25 feet. So that was the reason why I decided to go a little bit high on that. Um, the second one is the structures in front of my house. Um, as you can see also on the map here, to the right and all the backside, all of that gets flooded for more than four or five months out of the year. It's typically underwater. So it would not be prudent to build a structure on the back side of my house. Um, it's all low lying elevation and it floods and it kind of gets marshy, you know. So that was another reason why I chose not to build back there. Um, so I decided to put it in front of my house, right between, well, you could see it with the trees, but basically it's like by the, the barn, or I mean, sorry, by the, uh, the pond and the house. That whole area right there with that little clearing of trees is, it stays dry all year round. So that was another reason why I decided to put it in front of my house because no other options really. Um, the second variance is the minimum yard setback. Um, I have it like 20 feet on my property line and I thought that would be plenty enough considering if I went too far back then it's encroaching on my house and also the pond which is also the street drainage. So that was the reason for building it in the front and exactly that location because I felt if it needed to go another additional five feet that would be too close to the pond and then I would meet the minimum requirement of 30 feet to the water's edge or the drainage. The fourth is the color of it. It does not match the primary structure. I plan on reciting my house so I didn't want to have to match now and then when I reside match again. So I was going to do a pretty much the identical colors. I was going to do a steel siding with a green roof, steel roof, and uh, and they would match perfectly then. So that's why I chose not to uh, match the existing structure of my house. So I also have a letter here from one of my neighbors, basically stating that they don't have any issues with it. Wanted to put that in. Yeah, he couldn't. He couldn't be here today, so. He wanted to drop that off at my house. Um, so those are the four variances. I think that concludes me talking about it. I didn't know if you guys had questions. How did you build it without a permit? I didn't really know the whole process of that. Um, I'm sorry I didn't anticipate all of that. I just usually we're out in the country. I just figured it was just, you know, you build them. And I had talked to other different departments, and they basically said once we see it, then we'll tax you on it. And I didn't really know the whole division of that, of storm water. Even when I got the letter of it, I, I didn't know what it really was about. I thought it was like gutters or something. So, but yeah, I apologize for that. I didn't realize the whole regulations and all of that. Okay, so public hearing. <clears throat> Anybody want to speak in favor of this case? In favor? Yes, sir, come up by the micro, state your name, and address. Right there, sir, yes. <clears throat> John Snyder. I live at 54 Timber, just around the bend there and yeah. one house down at the very end of the dead end there. I live on the uh, north west side of the street. Um, I came to speak in favor of Mr. Anima's barn for a couple of reasons. Um, that street is a dead end and that curve is a dangerous curve. We don't have sidewalks there. I have um, seven children still living with me. One time I had 10 but um, that's our, that's where they ride their bikes, that's where they walk, um, and that street is very dangerous. That corner is a blind corner. You can't see when traffic's coming around that bend. They come very fast delivery drivers or just, I don't know why so many people end up down that road, but they do. And I've, this highway department was gracious enough to put some signage up there um, to uh, notify drivers that there's special needs children there and that there's uh, children at play. But that didn't really work. When Mr. Anima put the barn there, one of the amazing um, things about that corner is because when you were driving around there and there's nothing there, everybody just accelerated through that curve. With this structure here, I've noticed and my wife's noticed and we're actually pleasantly surprised by the um, 
people who kind of slow down on that corner now. Um, and so we appreciate that part of the, uh, the barn being there. It kind of adds uh, to the landscape and it's slowing drivers down. We've got a lot, we've got buses that come down there. There's nowhere, there's no turnaround. They basically pull into the field back, back into the neighbors who are here into their driveway to, to get out. It's, it's a real mess back there. Um, and the barn has actually helped that. Um, I'd, I'd like to speak to property value a little bit. Um, I'm a real estate appraiser. I've been an appraiser for um, 20, 27 or 28 years now. Uh, barns add value to, to property. They've not deterred from the values around uh, for many of the neighbors there. Um, any of the neighbors I've talked to, we've been all of them. We're all in, we, we support, but I'll let them speak to that themselves. So the property values have lifted as a result. The county's uh, assessed value has lifted as a result of this barn. And so um, my family, my wife, Stephanie, myself, and our family, we support. We're okay with this uh, barn and would encourage you to um, grant this variance if you would. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, John. Yes. Okay. Um, Madeline <coughs> Weedy. Madeline, yes. Madeline Weed, and I live at 61 Timber Drive, so I am a neighbor across the pond <laughs> from um, this gentleman. Uh, and at first when I heard a barn coming up, I thought, oh, you're going to block my view. But I love my view because I love barns. <laughs> so I think you're going to put it. And we had also put a barn in, and I needed variances in for myself because our garage we wanted for our cars and we have a riding lawnmower and a tractor and things like that nature so i was lucky enough to be permitted to my builder actually did it for me but um i could see the need for them and i just think it's gorgeous because it reflects off the pond you see the red you see the red in the windows which is really cool too so i have absolutely no qualms about them building it i really kind of like looking at it instead of just woods because we got enough woods <laughs> so that's it for me well thank you anybody else want to speak in favor <clears throat> seeing none anybody want to speak against or have any questions okay seeing none close the public hearing personally i think it's out place I know what your neighbor is saying. She's across the lake. I understand. She has a gorgeous view. It's a gorgeous house. But to drive through that subdivision and see that huge pole barn right off the, the street, that's why we have regulations. You know, it, I like pole barns. I like barns in the right location. You have 4.7 acres. You couldn't find another spot for that pole barn. I know you're saying it might be wet, but uh, you, know, you, could raise, you, know, you could raise up the soil. Yeah, how wet is wet? It's underwater. Is can, can I talk about it? Okay. Yeah, it's literally underwater yeah. for more than four or five months out of the year. All of that woods in the back is like substantial, like at least maybe a foot, yeah. you know, of water that whole time. I mean, it would be a major undertaking to try and do that to increase the elevation because for whatever reason, it just like it tapers back there and it all just put puddles from the east side to the south side that whole wooded area is flooded i mean you can go out there right now and it's i've got a lot of water yeah because all the rain yeah i'm gonna do that yeah i understand you're a contractor right no no i'm a diesel technician you're what diesel technician oh diesel yeah yes so i do do carpentry i do plumbing i do oh, a lot of stuff you do oh did you build the bowl you built the pole barn yourself or? yeah yeah i did that oh you Mm -hmm. It's all up to code. I reinforced everything. I put all the pylons, everything. Kind of we don't know. It wasn't inspected. Okay. It wasn't inspected. You had no permit. Okay. That's a real problem. I do understand. It's huge. I, I do. I it's apologize. It's huge. It's in the wrong place. It's over the building line. Mm -hmm. If you would have came in here we, we, you know, before and had a proper permit, we could have told you, hey, move over here a little bit. You know, but I, I think it's uh, I think it's isolated. How about your neighbors across the street? I mean, somebody turned you in. I mean, I, I, I understand that we got a couple of neighbors. If they were, well, we got a complaint. We got a complaint from one of your neighbors. And okay. Because I was under the impression that, because it was about a month prior before me getting the letter, yeah. um, somebody came out 
to assess it or something, they put like a sticky note on the back of my door yeah. and it was saying like, do you have anything inside the house that you have renovated or, or yeah. done of that nature? And I didn't really, I didn't really do anything in the inside. So I didn't really look into it any further. And then it was about a month after that. That's when I got the letter from you guys. Yeah. My understanding was a complaint. Yeah. Complaint. So you got a neighbor in happy and I did if I live across the street, I don't think I'd, I'd eat that easy. I would not really. I just because I know that right now that the uh, neighbor across the street is selling his house because he had it abandoned for many years. And well, I'm not saying it's. I don't know if it's okay. Or down or, or the, okay. the owner. I don't know. Yeah, I think you got a vacant lot across the street. Is that correct? Uh, right across the street from the barn or from my house. From the barn. From the barn, um, it's a little farther down, but there's a drive and that goes to uh, one of my neighbors, yeah. and that's like the abandoned house. That's it's actually up for sale right now. Yeah. It's got all the uh, the up, damage and all. How about across from your across from your house? There's nothing. It's just an open. Um, it's a prop. It's prop. Not. Yeah, it's just woods. Yeah, so directly across is just woods. But it's a sellable lot. I, I think it's the part of the neighbors. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's it's one of those neighbors. Yes. Okay. Well, I tell you, I got to look at this again. I tell you, this is uh, this is serious. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could make you remove it and locate it on another, another part of your property. I mean, you have 4.7 acres. I know some of that's in the pond, but this is we this could, is uh, talk to stormwater. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to stormwater. Yeah, yeah. See if there's any of that going on. I mean, you did everything incorrect, everything. So I'm gonna continue the case. I have to get into this a little bit deeper, and, and uh, you may want to leave your phone number because I will come out walk walk across that property. Okay. I'm gonna look at the tow poles and storm water and see what's what. Okay. So, the, so then you continue. It's gonna be continued. So okay. We'll make a motion to continue case DD dash two zero two four dash six eight. Let's continue. To so notify you. Yes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Next. Is DV-2024-70, applicant Charles Doppler, location 781 West, 900 South, Hebron, Indiana. Zone is R1, low density single family residential district. Acre is 27 plus. Request to allow for a 35 foot by 28 foot accessory structure to be built between the right of way and the primary structure to be used for personal storage. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Take your name and address. My name is Charles Doppler, uh, 781 West, 900 South, Hebron, Indiana, 46341. And uh, I want to build a, a little garage on the property. I was a little confused. I just learned it. I, and I think you told me yesterday, I, I learned something else that I could have possibly put it next to my neighbor's property. Uh, I see you got other locations. That's right. We get into that. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, but I had I basically had two front yards and, and yeah, but I I didn't know. What did you use it for? Uh, storage. Personal. Personal storage. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. It's a public hearing. Anybody want to speak in favor of this case? Seeing that anybody wants to speak against or any questions? Okay. Close the public hearing. Yeah, as you know, I was out there yesterday. And, yes. And I don't see the hardship, Charles. I'd like to work with you, but you have uh, 27 plus acres. Well, but you're cutting most of those acres out because yeah. I have to be 200 foot back because my house is 200 foot back. Yeah. And then I do have a pipeline on one side, a gas pipeline on one side of the property that probably cuts out 8, 10 acres. Uh, if you look at my topography, half of it's like, not half, but quite a bit of its wetlands, I have woods, then you're looking hundreds of feet away from everything where you'd have to pay somebody a lot of money to put a gravel road to get back there. Uh, it, it, it doesn't seem like it'd be that big of a deal to put a little garage on and, and yeah. it's in, in a high spot because a, a lot of it's pitched down to a lot of the properties downhill. Um, See the problem you have, you've got two front yards. It's coming off the yes, I, county, to the county roadway. Okay, so you're going to have a pole barn without a house, technically. Okay, I mean, if you're looking at it, it's, it's now, I went around and looked at the stakes you had, the white stakes. 
And <clears throat> I have a hard time with it because we have other areas to put it. So I don't see the hardship. And we talked that one area, you know, close to your neighbor's uh, fence. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of slope, but not so. Well, it's, it's quite a bit of slope. But, but that's, that's not a But it's flat over there in the area I showed you. Uh, and it never floods there. But you built up your house, right? You see your house. Well, yeah, it costs a lot of money to bring all the fill in to build up the house. And, uh, but you mentioned the other side of your, of your house. You had a pipeline? The, the pipeline is on the east side of the house. The septic system is on the west side of the house. Okay. How large is that easement for the pipeline? Uh, I think 40 foot, possibly 40 foot diameter. So you should have plenty of room. It's all, are you sure it's 40? But then I, I'm pretty sure the barrier for you have to be 40 foot away from the pipeline with anything. God, Charles. I, uh, I, but then I need a variance to put something on that side too. No, uh, I don't know. Oh, no, no, if it's behind your house or it lined up with your house, no, that's what we're saying. You have to stay away from these. We had a situation like this at Union Township and they moved it a little bit, okay? But uh, you have a lot of space. I, I know what you're trying to do, but I, I don't see the hardship. Uh, there's no one that is up against a little garage. I mean, it has to be a right location, a proper location. So you could, I mean, you have a spot right there. And also it's closer to the road. If I, if I put it where I want to put it, I'm, I go 40 foot from the road, which is just a little bit of gravel to come in, uh, where, you know, you're taking me 300 foot from the road. Well, you could. You that's could, not a hardship. That's not a hardship. You could come off your driveway. You could come off your driveway. I know you probably don't want to look at it. You mentioned yesterday, I don't want to look at it. Well, I understand that, but, you know, it's your, it's your barn, you know, so. But uh, I can't, no. I don't see a hardship, Charlie. I'm sorry. You got several spots, too, for sure, I'm looking at right now. If, and one is not that far from your house. Uh, if you put it on the. Well, where are you speaking? On the right side here. On the right side. I'm, right here. Here's your. Somewhere in there, yes. Now that's really a downhill pitch in that area. I mean, it, it, the grade is really steep there. You'd have to have a, you know, like an eight foot wall, six, eight foot wall on one side and a one foot wall on the other. I understand. But about, they go back over here, like we talked yesterday. We have this top here. Again, it's a long way to put a driveway in to get there. I will take it first. I can't tell you where to put it. And there's a draw somewhere in that area you're yeah. pointing to. But yeah. There's a real bad draw in that area. Uh, well, Ch Charles, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I just can't. I don't see the hardship. Can I ask? Well, the public no, hearing is so closed. Please, I read it. The public hearing is closed. Okay. So with that, Charlie, I'm going to deny case uh, DB-2024-70. So do I have another appeal process to someone else? Come to office, sure. You can do it. I mean, is there another party that I can appeal to? You appeal, yeah, you sure can. Go to the full board with the same process. Sure. Same fees, same notices. Same people or different people? Different yeah. people. Different it's a, people. It's a five-member yeah. board. Yeah, you could. You're welcome. You can appeal it. Thank you. Okay, next case is DV-2024-71. Applicant is Henry Dom, care of Adam Sorted with Sorted Wall. Location is 338 West 600 South Keeper, Indiana, Blue Grove. Zone is R1, Bose Estate, Family Residence District, Acre 6. Request to allow for proposed 3,000 per foot pole barn. To vary from the following. Excuse me, we are conducting a meeting in here. If you want to discuss something, go out to the rotunda. Thank okay. you. Uh, request to allow for a proposed 3,000 square foot pole barn to vary from the following. First, to allow an increase in height from the maximum allowed 20 feet to 21 feet 3 inches. Second, to exceed the number of accessory structure allowed from 3 to 6. And lastly, to allow an increase in maximum square footage allowed for accessory structure. 
Good afternoon. Yeah. You're on. They increased the volume of these mics. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah. Um, so Adam Swarden here on behalf of the property owner, Henry Dom. Um, so there's a bit of history on this that um, I wasn't aware of until after we got the application, because I know um, Mr. Dom had applied for a building permit, not realizing he was going to need a variance. Um, so we had met with staff, um, and, I, and the reason I put this presentation together is kind of walk through a bit of this history. My curse here, uh, just for purposes of uh, walking everybody through, at one point, uh, several years ago, I think like 2015, 2016 um, was the last year, these were all contiguously owned by one family and uh, somebody had passed and, and as part of the estate proceeding, uh, they broke off into three parcels, this land area. Um, and in that process, apparently it was rezoned from ag to R1, uh, which is this parcel here in these two. And part of the approval process that went through the estate and the county was they had to remove this driveway that goes across non-common ownership property. So that's now been done. That was a requirement for any future applications for this property, uh, whether it stayed in the same family or ultimately as what happened here, uh, a new purchaser came in, bought it, and those would be the dumps. Uh, this is traditionally the homestead that was on this farm acreage. So I'm gonna walk through here quickly, just some photographs. This is the original farmhouse at this property back when it was all ag. And this is also where the lion's share of the um, farm buildings are at as we continue back through the driveway um, from off of the county road. And so as you come up the driveway, this is now looking back towards county road. They have this old, um, almost historic like structure here, this barn that they use for animals. And then directly behind that, they have another all concrete uh, barn that's here that they use to keep equipment in. And as we continue back through the property, I'm gonna have to go back to the area here for a second. Uh, there's yet another barn that's back here that they keep animals and equipment in that goes back to the farm fields. Um, they have a couple of these smaller, I don't know to call them glorified sheds, they're almost like run-ins or combined run-ins with storage sheds. Um, so what they're proposing is where the circle is at. They're going to remove the structures that are there, and I believe they had this marked for you uh, to go out and view this, but this is where they're proposing now to come in and build a 40 by 60 by 14 barn. Um, the reason for this is they have a lot of animals. I don't know if you got a chance to go in uh, any of the buildings or whatnot, but they've got. I've seen them out. Yeah. Uh, so they have a lot of equipment that's now outside that they want to get in uh, just for protecting the integrity of the equipment they use the property. Uh, the other issue that they have is logistically they need more space to accommodate when they're um, breeding the animals and they have small um, um, either kits for the goats or they've got piglets and they've got chickens. Um, everything right now is being somewhat accommodated in this red barn, but they're out of space. So what they need is they need a building that's going to pull double duty where they can put in um, in this space the additional equipment that you saw out there that's stacked up and also have a portion of this be somewhat climate controlled where they can bring some of these younger animals in in the winter. Their kids are heavily involved in 4-H and for some of these animals that they want to take to the fair, they have to actually breed them and have them over the winter time for them to be old enough to participate in the county fair. Um, whereas right now they're kind of hamstrung with breeding them certain times of year where they can't take them to the fair. Um, so I know in the rezoning, this we did not realize that this was rezoned to R1 when we filed the initial application because the old zoning app still had it as ag. Um, so it's kind of interesting that it was rezoned to R1 just given the size, the acreage, the number of buildings. Uh, directly to the east is ag, but there is this little carve out. There's a commercial parcel there because I guess they do have some business activity related to uh, their farm functions uh, next to this property. Um, and, and obviously if we zoomed out in the area, they're completely surrounded by ag use. Um, I know there's a couple of homeowners across the street that are somewhat close that see the current property, uh, but where they're proposing to place this actually kind of hides most of that building from view from the street. Um, so that then gets them into the fact that based off what they currently have, uh, they're going to be over in square footage, I have the, uh, the numbers here in the application. I think it's a little over a thousand square feet. So they have to go from 5,471 square feet to 9,036 square feet. 
uh, to accommodate both this building and then the fact that technically upon that carve out of this parcel, they were already over on the square footage. Um, so that's where that variance comes into play under uh, section five and, and section 2.08. And then also the design of the building so they can get some of that equipment in and out does drive the fact that they need to go over one foot three inches on the height. So they're not looking for a significantly tall building, but just large enough so they can get those doors in there for the equipment that they currently have. Um, one of which is an excavator, which I don't know if that's still out there or not, but I do have that in some of these pictures. Um, so they've looked at different options and the reality is to try and keep this functional from the farming activities they have. This is really that only location. They've looked at doing additions to existing buildings. It doesn't quite work with what they need for programming for the animals. Um, in addition to some of the building limitations on the designs that are out there. And regardless, they would have to be coming before you for the square footage anyway. Um, and then of course, because this is an older property and they do have that one barn that's probably about 15, 20 feet in front of the primary structure, they put in for the front yard variance just to bring everything up, up to code. So I think with that, um, unless you guys have any questions or I have some other printouts here of some of the specifications I know that are in the application that I did not put in the presentation, um, that's what they're looking to accomplish with this. Okay, just for the public, how far would be off the road? Um, th this is approximately 450 feet back from the road. I don't have that exact measurement on their uh, site plan, but let me see if I have that noted. I don't. It had to be at least 400, at least. Okay. Yeah. I know they're at least that because I know that back building is uh, about 560 or 500. You want to point to location where you're going to put it? Yeah. So right where this circle's at, there's this little cluster of kind of those run-ins. So th these are going to come down, and so they're going to build that building right there to make yeah. use of the fact of the existing driveway where, again, they have a lot of that equipment just kind of sitting outside. Okay. All right, so public hearing, anybody want to <coughs> speak in favor of this case? Seeing none, anybody want to speak against or any questions on this case? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. So you're gonna remove one, I guess you call a shed? Yeah, I, kind of. I, call what you want to call it. It needs to come down the way. Um, and they need to clean that space up, and, and that made the most sense for location. What size is the one that's coming down? Uh, let me pull the property record card. I believe it's an 8 by 10. Okay. Hold on. I see a 10 by 10 and 8 by 4 inches. Yeah, Chris, I think it's on there as the 10 by 10. Okay. It's 10 by 10. Yeah, it's 10 by 10. <clears throat> okay. And the other structures you need, other buildings? I'm they sorry. Want keep, they want to keep the other? Yeah, they need to keep, because they're actually currently utilizing all those, and that's that's what's really driving us. They're at capacity there, okay. and um, they just don't really have the ability to add on to separate out some of this equipment, and they need a separate space for raising the young animals during the wintertime. Okay. And these other buildings, they are their grandfather's from the farm. They've been there for the farm. Right? Correct. Yeah, they were all ag use. And it, actually, what they're asking for now is all ag use. So I think kind of on the number of structures, we should be okay there. Exactly. Yeah. Are these thrifty and uh, animals, are they into crops too or just? Um, I know they do do some yeah. crops in the back. They've got, they do a lot of raising for their own use. They've got a big uh, garden. Out. In fact, actually, they might even have a picture because I expected those questions. So this is kind of way way back in the property back forward you can see they do have a rather large personal garden that they have there they don't have any other crops but i know conversations with them is down the road that they were going to look at starting to do hay and things here to do some of their own feed for them okay okay so with that shed removed how many square feet are we going So what's a what's a what's a bottom line? 
so what I had calculated, and, and again, because we put in for the um, front yard, I calculated based on what they currently have total with everything related to the parcel size. Um, their maximum they're allowed there is 5,471 square feet. And adding this building in and removing out the 10 by 10 with everything, it's 9,036 square feet. And that also counts the residents because that factors into that. Okay. So give me your balance. Um, How much are you got? <laughs> Let me do the math on that. Get my phone. <laughs> yeah. So it's 3,565 square feet over that picks up all, all the outbuildings. I'm sorry, repeat that. 3,565 square feet. Okay, over. Yeah. Okay. And I do have the area of this building. And be used strictly for uh, egg, egg use. Correct. Okay. So they're building, if we're doing outside wall, 40 by 60. So 2,400 yeah. square feet of that is included in that 3,500 square foot number. Okay, repeat that, please. 2,400 square feet. Is included in what? That's included in the total number yeah. between everything. Okay. That's what they're actually needing to be able to build this building at that location. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Appreciate you. No, no, the Meet is using it for ag, and it does take marriage that they're allowed to have multiple buildings. Yeah, he's removing one. So, okay. <clears throat> I'd like to, uh, to make a motion to approve case TB-2024-71 with understanding to remove the shed 10 by 20. Ten, 10 by 10 or okay. what, whatever the action is. Yes, whatever the demand. I see. I see it, but yeah. Hope the property's card is great. Well, whatever dimensions are that building in the red circle, it's gone. Okay. <laughs> All right. New pool barn be used for egg only. All right. Okay. Thank you. So you're approved. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other cases or correspondence or information? No. Okay. Adjourn the meeting. Thank you.